Hi everyone, I'm Miguel and I'm a developer relations engineer on Android. And in this video, we're going to talk about Google account linking with the help of our amazing OAuth expert, Ade. So what exactly is Google account linking? Google account linking enables Google account holders to easily and safely link their Google account to other third-party products and services. This enables a wide variety of richer experiences between Google and third-party services. Let's take a look at some examples. Account linking is used in many places in the TV ecosystem and beyond. For example, linking your favorite video service to your Google account can improve recommendations on Google TV. You can find content you started on another device on the continue watching row on your Google TV. You can start playing your favorite TV show by telling your Google Assistant to play that show. Account linking is used in many places well beyond TV as well. For example, after linking your smart home device to your Google account, you can turn on your lights with Google Assistant. Next, let's clear up some common confusion we hear from developers. Google account linking is not the same thing as sign in with Google functionality. The sign in with Google button allows the user to use their Google account to authenticate to sign into your service. This lets you know and verify who the user is. Google account linking allows the user to consent and authorize having their data on your service shared with Google. You should think about these as separate concepts, sign in with Google for authentication and Google account linking for authorization. Now that we have that cleared up, Let's take a look at the standard web OAuth flow for account linking. From the Google app, you'll select which service you want to link. Then after reviewing and agreeing on the Google app, the user is taken to your site to complete the authorization flow and must sign in before consenting to the linking. Then they're taken back to the Google app when the linking has successfully completed. In this video, we'll look at three types of account linking. First is OAuth, which is the foundation for all account linking integrations using the standard web OAuth flow. Then we'll also look at Streamline and App Flip flows, which build on top of your web OAuth integration. Now I'll turn it over to Ade to help walk you through OAuth. So what is OAuth? OAuth 2.0, which stands for Open Authorization, is an open industry standard protocol that enables delegated access. A distinction between authentication and authorization is necessary here, as both terms are often used interchangeably. Authentication refers to the process of verifying who someone is, while authorization refers to the process of verifying what someone has access to. OAuth, an authorization protocol, allows a user to authorize a registered application to act on their behalf or access their data in specific contexts replacing the need for full access methods, such as disclosing a username and password. To implement Google account linking, you need to implement two main OAuth endpoints. The authorization endpoint, where the user consents to sharing their data, and the token endpoint, where an access token is generated for Google to act on behalf of the user. This implementation should be done using the secure authorization code flow. The following steps are completed in the authorization code flow. A user gesture, such as a button press or click event on a Google application starts the linking process. Google directs the user to your authorization endpoint where they log in and consent to having their data shared. Your authorization endpoint generates an authorization code and returns it to Google via the redirect URL specified in the initial request to your endpoint. Google sends the authorization code to your token endpoint, which verifies the authenticity of the code and returns an access token and a refresh token. As a reminder, the access token is the short-lived token that your API server accepts as the client's proof of authorization to act on the user's behalf, while the refresh token is the long-lived token that Google can store and use to acquire new access tokens when the access token expires. Once the token has been returned, Google can now make calls to your application API endpoint using the retrieved token. Now, let's talk about the specific details of the OAuth endpoint you will be creating. 
In addition to your resource server API endpoint, you will need to have the following OAuth endpoints implemented. The authorization endpoint, the token endpoint, and the revocation endpoint. Given the wide adoption of OAuth over the years, there are now standard libraries and frameworks that exist for almost every programming language that implements an OAuth server for you and defines all the required endpoints. You can opt for using one of these libraries or implementing your own methods. First, let's look at implementing the authorization endpoint. Google sends a request to your authorization endpoint, which looks something like the sample on the right. For your authorization endpoint to handle authorization requests, it should do the following. Verify the client ID and redirect URI values to prevent granting access to unintended or misconfigured client applications. Check if the user is signed into your service. If the user isn't signed in, complete your service sign up or sign in flow and allow the user grant access to Google to access their data on your service. Generate an authorization code for Google. The authorization code can be any string value, but it must uniquely represent the user, the client the token is for, Google in this case, and the code's expiration time. And it must not be guessable and must be a single use, meaning the specific code can only be used once. You typically issue authorization codes that expire after approximately 10 minutes. Redirect the user's browser to the URL specified by the redirect URI parameter. Include the authorization code you just generated and the original unmodified state value when you redirect by appending the code and state parameters. The state parameter is a bookkeeping value that is passed back to the client unchanged in the redirect URI. A sample redirect request is shown on the right. Next, we look at implementing the token endpoint. Your service token exchange endpoint is responsible for two kinds of token exchanges exchanging authorization codes for access tokens and refresh tokens, exchanging refresh tokens for access tokens. After the user signs in and your authorization endpoint returns a short-lived authorization code to Google, Google sends a request to your token exchange endpoint to exchange the authorization code for an access token and a refresh token. A sample request to the token endpoint to exchange an authorization code for an access token and a refresh token is shown on the right. To exchange authorization codes for an access token and a refresh token, your token exchange endpoint responds to requests by executing the following steps. Verify that the client ID identifies the request origin as an authorized origin and that the client secret matches the expected value. Verify that the authorization code is valid and not expired and that the client ID specified in the request matches the client ID associated with the authorization code. Confirm that the URL specified by the redirect URI parameter is identical to the value used in the initial authorization request. If you can't verify all of the above criteria, return an HTTP 400 bad request error with error invalid grant as the body. Otherwise, Use the user ID associated with the authorization code to generate a refresh token and an access token. These tokens can be any string value, but they must uniquely represent the user and the client the token is for, and they must not be guessable. For access tokens, also record the expiration time of the token, which is typically an hour after you issue the token. Refresh tokens, however, don't expire. Return JSON response that looks like the sample on the right in the body of the HTTPS response. Google stores the access token and the refresh token for the user and records the expiration time of the access token. When the access token expires, Google uses the refresh token to get a new access token from your token exchange endpoint. Let's examine the content of the return token. In general, you want to create an opaque token, that is, a random and unique string that doesn't leak any implementation detail or reveal any information related to the user. 
An example of an opaque access and refresh token is shown here. A token should specify the following information. The opaque token string, the type of token, access or refresh, the expiration date of the token in seconds. 3600, for example, denotes that the access token will expire in one hour from the time it was generated. The scope of access the client is limited to. When an access token expires, Google sends a request to your token exchange endpoint to exchange a refresh token for a new access token. Similar to the way you handle other requests, do the verifications to ensure the request is valid. If the request is valid, generate a new access token and return it in the body of the HTTPS response. A sample of a token refresh response is shown on the right. Next, we look at the revocation endpoint. There are a number of reasons why the token you sent to Google might need to be revoked, such as when the user explicitly wishes to unlink the account. Google calls your revocation endpoint in this case with information about the token that should be revoked. The revocation endpoint returns a success or error response depending on the status of the deletion. This summarizes the list of endpoints you need to implement. To recap, when a user initiates the linking process, Google calls your authorization endpoint and subsequently the token endpoint. The account is linked on the Google side after you successfully return the access token to Google. I will now hand off to Miguel to talk about the streamlined linking flow, which builds on top of the OAuth linking flow. Thanks, Ade, for the great explanation on OAuth. Now, let's take a look at another type of account linking that builds on top of your OAuth integration, Streamline Account Linking. Streamline combines a few key pieces to make a really simple linking process without the user being redirected to your site and having to log in and remember their credentials set on your service. It can check if there's an existing account with your Google account email, and if not, it can create a new account for you. The existing or new account will be linked to your Google account. Finally, it grants the permissions needed to automatically sign the user in when you integrate one tap sign in on your app or site. One place we see streamlined account linking is frictionless subscriptions on TV. Frictionless subscriptions combines streamlined account linking, Google Play billing, and one tap integration for automatic sign in into your app. It allows the user to purchase a new subscription create a new account if needed, link those accounts, and automatically log into the app. All of this with just a few clicks of your remote. To learn more about frictionless subscriptions, we have another video you can check out that goes into more detail. Streamline extends the same token endpoint from your OAuth integration with three new intents, check, create, and get. Let's take a look at how these work. To start, Google sends a check intent request with the ID token, which includes name, email, and profile picture. With this, you'll check to find a matching Google account ID or email. In this case, you found a match, so you return account found as true. Next, Google will send a get intent request that will link the existing account on your service with the Google account and return the access and refresh tokens. What if you don't already have an account? After sending the check intent request as before, you'll return account found as false since you did not find a matching Google account ID or email. Now, instead of a get intent request, Google will send a create intent request along with the ID token. After you create the new account, you'll link it with the Google account and return the access and refresh tokens. For non-TV services, the user may be taken to the web OAuth flow or streamline flow. Google may ask the user to provide some additional details before we start the streamline linking process. For example, if the user doesn't already have an account in your service, we can use the streamline flow to create and link a new account. If the user already has an account and it uses the same email as their Google account, we can still use the streamline flow to link the existing account to their Google account. However, if the user has an account, but it uses a different email as their Google account, we can instead use the web OAuth flow to link that account with their Google account. Additionally, 
There's another case the user may end up in the web OAuth flow. If the streamline account linking fails due to a linking error, the user can be taken to the web OAuth flow as a fallback. However, account linking for frictionless subscriptions on Google TV will only use streamline account linking. It will either link an existing account with a matching email or create a new account with your Google account email, all within the streamline flow. Finally, let's take a quick look at AppFlip, which is another flow built on top of OAuth. With AppFlip, users are seamlessly flipped to your app to obtain user authorization. The flow is similar to the web OAuth flow we reviewed before. Instead of redirecting to your website though, we launch your installed app instead. This approach provides a faster and easier linking process since the user does not have to re-enter their username and password to authenticate. Instead, AppFlip leverages the credentials from your user's account on your app to complete the linking process. I hope you now have a better understanding of Google account linking and all the different flows we've reviewed, including web OAuth, Streamlined, and AppFlip. Make sure to check out the links in the video description to learn more.